Hey folks, Würfel here, and today we're gonna take a look at these dice, and hmm, doesn't look very impressive. For anyone who recognizes the set, you know they can look a lot better, but the main reason they don't look good at the moment is the light, because we handmade dice makers go outside take the best sun we can get to take some pristine shots of our dice or we have a nice studio set up with some good individual lights so we can take the best shots out of our dice. But when you're sitting at your gaming table then there's the question what happens with all these nice dice? Um, they still look pretty good but they're not popping. So what we need is a perfect light setup for our gaming table and at that point I will show you the cyber tray. You can see the camera already has its struggle to capture the light, but take a look at this one here and now take a look at it here. Now it pops. Now you can get all the nice colors to shine. And this is the lighting that your dice deserve and this will pop them up the most. Also, I mean, you want to celebrate your dice rolling, right? So yeah, you get some extra blink just for rolling your dice. So just having a simple boring white would be not as optional. So of course, there's an app where you can control all your lights so let's say we want to have some red instead of our white or oh, let's make it a nice green that comes along with the dice maybe a little bit more in the yellow range with some red you can in individually update the colors like you want so in this case we have a nice blue uh, you can also use the app to change uh, some values on the minimum and maximum. For example, let's raise this and you will see it's it's changed. So it's not going that low anymore. So you can also change the maximum so it's not as bright. Um, there's a save button where you can store all your information and there's an RGB link that will confirm it. Uh, and the last thing is the threshold here. And this is for the interior how to detect that the dice are coming through. I will show you in a moment how this works. Let's have a look on the inside. So what you can see immediately, I take this to the side. When I come closer to the sensor, then it reacts. So this is a proximity sensor that sits right beneath this connector piece. And as the dice tower has a hole running completely through it, the sensor can reach on the inside of the tower. And when some dice came along, that's roughly about this height where they cross it, then they will toggle the sensor and release the blink. So let's have a look on the inside and how this all is going on. First, I shut it off. Here are two switches on the bottom, one for the power, one for the Bluetooth module. Um, the Bluetooth module will draw a lot of energy, so I made a separate switch for this. And here we have the inside. We have our Arduino who's controlling the whole setup. We have a Bluetooth module for the connection, so this is pure optional. You can, of course, just program in the values that you like, and you don't need the Bluetooth value on this point. And then we have our LED strips, one for the ring and one for the landing zone. And because these LED strips can draw a lot of current, and to protect your electronics, you... Um, connect them separately with your power source. So from our USB here, there's a switch. One goes to our Arduino here, and the other one directly connects to the uh, LED strips. 
and now to toggle the LED strips you need these little MOSFETs here. You see these metal parts here? These are free MOSFETs for the ring and here are free MOSFETs for the landing zone. And with the Arduino you just electronically switch these on and off. They have uh, three little legs, two are for the power part and one is for the data signal so you can switch them. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, it looks very crowded in here because I only had a blue cable available at the time. Um, but to cover you, this is not what you need to uh, build this. So let's have a look how all this is connected. Here is the build plan that I made. Um, thanks to Fritzing, which is a quite easy software to get into. Um, for the LED strips that you need, you need some 5 volt powered LED strips. Uh, I replaced them here in the program with a single RGB LED, so you get the idea how this works. Here are the MOSFETs and you see for every color on each LED strip, there's one MOSFET to control it. And then you have here the data lines that go up from the Arduino and switch them. On the bottom here, we have the Arduino Bluetooth module, also how it's connected. And I put a switch in on the 5 volt um, power line so you can switch it off if you don't need it and save up some energy. Because in this setup, the tray runs about 6 to 8 hours with a single full power bank. And I think that's pretty good for a good gaming night. And now we come to the heart of the whole thing, and this is this APDS 9960. This is a um, proximity sensor, or it is even more than that. It is an ambient light and gesture sensor, so it could also detect from which side the dice came in. But we just use the feature that it can detect a distance, and we only need this proximity part of it. And over here, this is the power connection, the USB plug that goes into the power bank, the mini USB that goes into the Arduino, and as well, here's a switch that uh, connects the whole power. And there's one line going directly to the LED strip and one line going to the Arduino. So there's only one thing that I need to mention now, the LED strips that you use, they on one place they need 5 volts, on the other hand you need some that are uh, plus 5 volt on the common line. So you can have some that have common ground and some have common uh, plus 5 volts. Uh, for this setup here they are common 5 volts. Uh, if you have some that are common ground then you need to switch the black and the uh, red line here. So you have the ground on the common line and then you put the 5 volts over the um, MOSFETs here. And that's basically how the setup is made. Now let's have a short look at the code. So this is made in Arduino. I go quickly through this. Um, I have everything uh, well commented here so you find all the information inside. At the beginning here, we have a little bit of information from the nice guys who made the um, gesture sensor uh, library. So this is from SparkFun and I just found it online and I let this part in here. So I copied their code and modified it to my needs. And of course, all the information is given here. They also um, said how to, uh, <clears throat> how to wire the sensor, where you find all the informations. And of course, the licensing, uh, I really like that this is be aware. So if you see any one of the SparkFun team, um, then you have to spend them a round of beer. And I really like the idea, so I want to keep that. Um, also, I stated that this code is a little bit modified for my cyber tray and that I have the Bluetooth module, uh, most of it, I read several tutorials on that, uh, most of it I found here, and the software for the smartphone is linked here. So all the information you need you find there, and there are also good explanations how this works. Okay, let's have a quick look here. 
we load the libraries that we need, we set up all the values that we need. So there's a character holder that is for the Bluetooth signal that we receive. We have the pin numbers um, for the different uh, LEDs. We have values that we want to send to these pins. Um, of course, we have it for the ring part, we have it for the landing zone. Then we have a threshold for the proximity sensor um, because regarding to what kind of material you printed your parts with, if they are shiny and good reflective or not, you need to update the threshold, not releasing the blink on its own. So if I would need, uh, if I would use a white tower on this, for example, that would reflect more, then I would uh, need to update the threshold to become lower. Um, so for that reason, I made the threshold uh, a variable that you can send with your smartphone. So if I change towers, I can update it. Um, then we have the pulse length. This is a value that uh, sets how long the fading takes. Um, of course, the fade minimum and maximum. And then we already start to come to our setup. So all the pins are set as what they are. So uh, all our LED pins are output pins. Um, we set them all on low for the beginning. If we have any values stored on our um, EEPROM, that is the little storage unit on the Arduino, then we try to find that information and use it. So if you use the save button, everything is stored in the EEPROM. And the next time you start your cyber tray, it will grab these informations and everything is fine. Okay, then we initialize the IPDS sensor. Of course, this is something that I kept from the tutorial part that I took. And then we start with our loop. The loop here, it is a two part loop. The first loop is fading everything up. So you see up here the fade value, which is the actual level of uh, intensity that we put out, um, runs between the minimum and the maximum. So here it checks as long as this is smaller than the fade maximum, it will add with each round. So every round this takes, it goes up and up and up and up until it is the same value as the fade maximum. And when we reach this and we are at the fade maximum, then we switch to the other loop, which is basically the same, but it runs down. So as long as we not reach the fade minimum, it subtracts one. Then we are inside the loop. And inside the loop, we check if there's something coming from the Bluetooth. And if there's something coming from the Bluetooth, we store it in the variable Bluetooth. And then we check what we have inside of Bluetooth. So if we find uh, R, then we are waiting for a value that is set to the red LED. And then we take this uh, parameter and set it to R. The same goes for green, for blue, for red on the zone, green on the zone and blue on the zone, for the threshold value, fade maximum and minimum here. And of course, if we want to save something, then he puts all the values that we have into the EEPROM and save them there. Then comes the blink that uh, confirms the saving. And here we finally reach the point where we uh, put out our values. So we decide on which LED it needs to go. Then we take the value from that, multiply it with the fade value and some correction value here. And this value is put out to the pin. So this is basically what is sent to the, to the LED and how bright it is at this time step. And while fade value is rising, the LED become brighter and brighter. And in the next loop, it becomes lower and lower. And after that is done, we come to the point where we check if the proximity sensor is reaching something. So here we have the setup of the proximity sensor and we simply check if the proximity data we have is greater than our threshold, then we do the blink. And you see here it is actually sent to, plus, uh, to five, so it five times blinks. And here are the 
pins and the values that we want to set out and a small delay for the blinking. So we turn them on, we turn them off and this five times, that's our blink. And yeah, then we just wait the pulse length and the loop starts over. If this loop is done, we switch to the next loop, which is simply the same as before. We just run downwards. So you see here is a minus. So we subtract from our fade value until we reach the fade minimum. And it basically do the same. We read the Bluetooth. If there's something in, we do this and then it sends out the values to the RGB LEDs. Then it checks if something on the proximity is going on. And if something is coming, it does the blink and that's it. I put in a lot of comments here to help you along what is what. So if there are any questions on this, feel free to ask in the comments down below. And I hope this is helpful to you. I will put out all the files that you need to print these. I will give out a list of materials that you need for this. You of course get the code, you get all the links that you need, you get the build plans, um, you get a screen capture of the app and how to set up the app. Um, and then you're ready to go to build your own cyber tray. And you see, I reach started is and we have the same values as before. So we have the nice green on the outside and the blue blink and the landing zone. For everyone now that is not willing to work with Arduino, uh, I can think of it as pretty intimidating in the first and uh, it is not something that you just simply do on a quick run. You need a little bit of time for this to twiggle your way around. Um, for the easy setup, I will do a simple version of this tray where you can just install some regular LED strips with a USB plug. There are also versions of these with uh, small um, remote controllers so you can change colors. Of course, you don't have this special feature here coming from uh, the tower, you don't have the sensor in, but you still can manage to change your colors. So this would be the very easy way to make yourself a nice setup so you can bring your dice in the right light for your gaming night. Okay, so that's from my end so far. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a lot of fun building this and please share pictures of this. Um, I'm curious to see what you're doing. This is by far not the end of this project. I already started to work with uh, addressable LEDs, so these NeoPixel style stuff. So I want to run some animations all around the board here. And um, But yeah, for me, Arduino is also very new. So this is something that I need to learn and to tinker around with and make some experiments. But the next version will definitely be a twat cooler. I guess. And yeah, thanks for watching. I wish you a lot of fun building these and until the next time, happy dice making, happy printing and happy electronic soldering. Bye.